see Jews in space. 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 All right, so Jews aren't exactly known as, you know, sports stars or space heroes, but it looks like the Mandalorian is one of the best Jewish superheroes of all time. Well, what am I talking about? Well, it's not a video I'm making up. Lots of people have done this. Screen Crush did a great video, but there's, while it was a little long, the big difference between their video and mine is, well, the fact that I'm actually Jewish. I'm not knocking Screen Crush. I'm a big fan of their channel. But they did sort of a uh, review of The Mandalorian from an outside perspective. I want to do it from an internal perspective, right? And is this actually a thing, or is it just something that pop culture is jumping on? Are The Mandalorian space Jews? Well, let's take a look at the director and creator, John Favreau. Now, besides the fact that he's known for one of the greatest Christmas movies of all time, John Favreau grew up Jewish. Well, half Jewish. His mother was Jewish, which actually makes him Jewish. That's how Judaism works. And unfortunately, his mother passed, and his father raised him as a single father, which is why a lot of his films, like Iron Man, have kind of father issues going on. And while he's only half Jewish, he has been embraced by the Jewish community, and he has embraced his Jewish religion and the fact that he did have a bar mitzvah, and that his extended family made sure that he understood his Jewish identity. He didn't read from the Torah, but he was called up for an aliyah, which is more of a reformed version of a bar mitzvah. And hey, he even went on to marry a shiksa goddess of love. So hey, more power to Jews everywhere, achieving lifelong goals. All right. What does this have to do with the Mandalorian? And how in the world is the Mandalorian looked at as a metaphor or a retelling of the Jewish identity? Well, we know that Star Wars has space Nazis. I mean, like, literally space Nazis. The Empire is absolutely a cut and paste of Nazi Germany. There's no question about that. Their officers dress the same, their soldiers are called stormtroopers, etc., etc., and they were focused on wiping out entire races that didn't go along with their agenda. And as a member of the Jewish race, this is something that will always be part of my identity. Now, one of the parts of the Holocaust, which was when Germany tried to wipe out the Jewish race, was something called Kristallnacht, which is the Night of Broken Glass. It was when Nazis went around destroying Jewish synagogues in Germany and burning them to the ground, breaking Jewish shops, and throwing bricks through windows, hence the Night of Broken Glass. This was known as the night that basically Judaism was destroyed by the Nazis in Germany. Similarly, Mandalore has the Night of a Thousand Tears, when the Empire destroyed their domed cities and bombed the heck out of their planet, turning the desert into glass, hence Night of Broken Glass. All right, now you could say, okay, that's a bit of a stretch, but let's talk about Mandalorian culture. All right, there's lots of t Mandalorians, much as there's lots of types of Jews out there. In fact, Jews are some of the most diverse people on the planet. There are Ethiopian Jews, there are Asian Jews, there are American Jews, Israeli Jews. And one of the things that the more religious sects of Judaism, the Hasidic, they wear hats. They're very noticeable. They stand out amongst all the Jews in the world. And like I said, there's a lot of different type of Jews out there. One of the things that the ultra-Orthodox or Hasidic do is they wear head coverings. They keep their head covered at all times. This is both for the men and the women. Different types of hats are different uh, ways of covering the head are used for different sects. Like I said, there are lots of different types of Jews, just like there are lots of types of Mandalorians. And some of the Mandalorians are more religious, hence they keep their head covered just like Jews. It's the idea of reminding you that there's a power above you. That's why Jews keep their head covered. It's to remind them of God. And while women wear scarves or wigs, men can wear everything from a yarmulke or kippah to more formal hats. Well, the Mandalorian call it religion, and the Jewish religion have a lot of similarities. For example, take the bath in the living waters. Well, Judaism has the exact same thing. It's called a mikha which also literally translates to living waters. Again, gee, no coincidence when you have a you know, <laughs> Jewish writer-director. So the living waters, known as a mikvah, while traditionally is also is very much used by women on a monthly basis, it's also something that men in the Orthodox community also take part in. A lot of people have mikvahs in their home. They kind of look like a jacuzzi, usually in the basement. 
and they're used for purification and to return to a state of holiness, exactly as done in The Mandalorian when they need to bathe themselves in the living waters of Mandalore. All right, so let's get into some specific stuff. Remember the episode, I think it was episode three, no, maybe it was six spies, that was the name of the episode, and everyone was like, who are the spies? Is it going to be, you know, one of the, one of the uh, you know, night owls? Is it going to be the armorer? Who's going to betray everyone? And everyone was wondering, well, you know, exactly what is this title referring to? Which Mandalorian is going to turn out to be the spy and betray everyone? Okay, well, no, that's actually not it. It's referring to these guys. Well, the, the, not, the 12 people who volunteered to go back to Mandalore. It's exactly like the 12 spies that Moses, or Moshe, sent into Canaan when the Jews were trying to reclaim their homeland after the exodus from Egypt. So the 12 spies, or rather the title spies, that the episode is, re is referring to are not people spying against the Mandalorians. They're talking about the 12 spies, or the volunteers that Bo-Katan called, to go back to Mandalore and check out the homeland before it's resettled. It's a retelling of this very important part of the Jewish story, the Jewish history, of retaking Israel from the Canaanites. All right, so yes, while the spies turned out not to be bad guys, they turned out to just be the title of the explorers. Let's look at some other examples from season three. Remember when Flute Lady and uh, School of Rock Dude are there and everyone thought this was kind of a joke episode? Well, what it really was showing, again, as a metaphor for Jewish life, is that throughout the centuries, Jews have been called upon to provide services that others could not. As an example, throughout the Middle Ages, Christians were forbidden by the Pope from being moneylenders. Jews were not. Hence, a lot of Jewish people became moneylenders because they were the only ones allowed to be. Hence, all of the anti-Semitic myths that have appeared about Jews being cheap or money grub grubbing. It's because we were the only ones allowed to handle money throughout the, throughout the Middle Ages. They were the bankers. And this was by law because Christians could not be money loaners. All right. So in Mandalorian Season 3, in the episode Guns for Hire... Mandalorians, Bo-Katan and Din Djarin, are hired to take down Doc Brown and go after the renegade droids because they're the only ones legally allowed to because as part of their religion, they're allowed to carry weapons. Much like Jews were the only ones allowed to loan money, Mandalorians are the only ones allowed to fight. All right, now let's look at another important part that connects Judaism to the Mandalorians, and that's light. Light is a very important part of Judaism, and it comes from the eternal flame that was part of the original temple built in Jerusalem by King Solomon, and again in the second temple built after the Romans. Now, in eternal flame, you may know that most from things like John F. Kennedy's tomb or other uh, you know, p politicians or famous grave sites. In Judaism, the eternal light represents a higher power, and you'll see this in every single Jewish temple or synagogue hanging above the ark. Now, while different cultures who have toppled the Jews over the years have tried to extinguish this light and take Jewish identity away, there's always been a return and reigniting the eternal flame, which is what keeps the Jewish people alive and going, no matter how hard it's tried. And much like that in The Mandalorian, the eternal flame is represented by the forge, by the, uh, the, the great forge. And at the end of season three, when Mandalore is taken back, the forge is relit and the eternal flame is returned and Mandalore is now on its way to rising again and taking back its homeland. So yeah, are there a lot of Jewish superheroes and space adventurers out there? Eh, you know, a few. I mean, we are 2% of the population and it's nice that we get our representation. While for the most part, Jewish representation in pop culture has been metaphorical, it's nice that when there are Jewish directors and writers out there, they're incorporating so much of the Jewish identity into their work. So, well, yeah, we can all cheer for Mark Spector, Moon Knight, Magneto, Batgirl, there are, Batwoman, excuse me, there are, there are, you know, obviously Jewish superheroes and supervillains out there. It's cool that the entire Mandalorian race is absolutely based on Jewish culture, from head coverings to eternal light to calling upon them to do tasks that only Mandalorians, only Jews, could perform. The metaphor is there. And, and honestly, this video could probably go on for, you know, hours talking about even more similarities between Mandalorian culture and Judaism, such as the fact that Hasidic Jews, the very ultra-religious, refer to their 
Oh, their, their path has the way, has Chaderech. The fact that there's 12 tribes that all had to come together, and each tribe has their own symbol and, and icon, and they were all actually, each the 12 spies had to, had to be from all the different tribes. All right, I'm going on and on, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the Mandalorian and Judaism connected. What do you think? There's a lot more out there, and uh, I'd love to hear from you. Are there other things you've noticed that connect Jewish culture and Mandalorian culture? Leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, thanks for sharing, and I'll see you guys in the next video.